Great, okay. Uh, we're gonna kick off uh, the Schedule Now overview. Uh, so just a little bit of background. This feature is live. It's been live for, I'd like to say, a couple of weeks now. Uh, we gave early access to some of our beta testers, um, and then we sent out um, another wave of users, I think it was about a week and a half ago. Um, this feature is currently available to everyone. Uh, what I'll be walking you through, you can follow the instructions yourself uh, with me. I'm going to be have them open in a separate window so you can follow exactly what I'm doing. Uh, you can go in straight after this, set it up for yourself and start scheduling today. Um, if you are a current HomeGage subscriber or you have a um, services license, you'll be able to get access to this immediately at no extra cost. So what we'll do is I'll walk you through some of the background, a little bit of uh, some of the benefits of having a scheduler, and then we'll go through the setup. But the setup should take no more than five minutes. So uh, next up, what are, what are the benefits just generally of having uh, an online scheduler? Um, you've got something that's uh, mobile friendly and it's managed. Uh, so more and more people are, are wanting to um, organize time with you uh, at all hours of the day and night. So you've got a website that's bringing in business all times of the day and night. Uh, if you just direct them to your phone number, you're gonna be inundated with calls if you're lucky. Um, and then you're gonna have to call them back. You're gonna have to rearrange everything. You're gonna have to juggle schedules, go for the same sales uh, spiel each time. Uh, a scheduler allows you to gather business while you sleep. So you've gone to the effort of creating a website Hopefully you've used one of our awesome websites that um, our amazing web team have put together. Uh, they've seen all the different services you offer. They've seen example reports and they're like, yep, I'm going to pull, pull the trigger with this guy. They can hit the scheduler and they can book the time with you there and then. So the, the real benefits are reduces your administration, brings in business while you sleep, allows you to connect with customers on their terms versus trying to catch you while you're busy and out on site. So then we'll uh, talk through why schedule now specifically. Uh, so one of the things I was talking about this morning is there's a million tools out there for home inspectors. There's so many different solutions that you need to buy. You need to, uh, you're told that you need to integrate with. So you've got to get, okay, well, I, I, I need a solution for payments. Oh, and I need my own separate credit card uh, processing provider. And I need uh, this guy to enable me to distribute the reports and oh, then I need the scheduler through this guy. And then I've got to try and get all these different systems working together. Um, so this is all under one roof and it all works with your existing home gauge subscription and services, which you're already paying for. So anyone who has services or a subscription right now, you already have the scheduler. Once you go through these few steps, you could put this in your email signature. You can start distributing it in any of your email templates and start scheduling immediately. Um, just with uh, any of our other um, calendar integrations, uh, we're already integrated with Google. Um, you've got everything in one place. Um, and then you don't have to make, be managing paper anymore. Uh, the big, big thing is we're already very, very competitively priced. Adding a scheduler to the mix only makes HomeGage a better option. Uh, we've seen compared to some other um, options out there, if you wanted a bolt on a scheduler, if you went with uh, different solutions, you can be saving over $300 just by using the uh, Schedule Now scheduler versus buying a separate solution or going with one of the more expensive options. Uh, another side benefit is uh, anyone who's, uh, again, hosting with HomeGage will know this. Um, this is a traffic boost to your site. So not only are you uh, providing a greater draw for people to come in the first place, it's not just the brochure site, they're spending longer on the site, they're going to be scheduling, they're going to find out more about your services, and they're more inclined to stay there. So we'll jump through to that. And I know we're going to get to the important part, which is you want to, you want to kind of see how it works and you want to configure it. So I'm going to go through how to do this. So everyone, you can be following uh, along at home. Uh, and we'll be sending out a video with instructions, and then we're going to be sending out onboarding emails to pretty much the a whole uh, subscription user base uh, early next week with more instructions. But awesome support center, really easy to find. Just go to homegage.com, click on support, homegage support center. This guy, and then I 
I'm going to say configure schedule now. And I don't even have to uh, put in schedule now. It's the top option, figure. There's configure and use schedule now. Really straightforward instructions here. So I'm going to follow along exactly uh, what they're providing here just to show you how easy it is. So I'm going to, it's going to wreck my presentation. Optimize the screens. Logins are engaged on this side. I'm going to make this guy real small. This is going to be. So what I'm going to do on the right hand side, I'm just going to follow the instructions and I'm going to sign into my own demo um, account. We're going to set it up and then we're going to test it. And it's going to be really straightforward. And I'm going to show you how to um, get the scheduler set up, how to configure your working hours, how you can configure your time slots, and then you get how to test it. We're going to implement it. Um, we're, going to, we're going to run it, what it would look like for a, a consumer. So what I'll do quickly, make sure I'm signed in. Yep, it's my company. So I'm going to sign in. I'm at the inspector dashboard. Uh, so it says the major steps in enabling schedule now and setting your time slots are below. So they've given you a nice link here, which takes you exactly to the page you want to go to. Uh, you can click on that. It'll take you straight there. Otherwise, you can just go to company settings, public appointment settings. That's just where that link takes you. It's a shortcut. And then by default, probably most of you guys are going to have disabled public appointments uh, enabled. If you're using any of the existing um, beta schedulers, would recommend that you um, kind of watch the video, make sure this is the right solution for you, because this would switch over um, any of the scheduler. So you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on enable schedule now. So it just says enable schedule now, scroll to the bottom and click save settings. That's really straightforward. Save settings. So technically now scheduling has been enabled. Don't worry, nothing's changed. Uh, all this has done is it's generated a unique URL for us, which we can distribute. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of configuration first before um, we start using it. Uh, so then we scroll down, we uh, click on the scheduling configuration option. So go down here, and here's some uh, configuration options. So first thing you want to do is you want to say, what are the general rules around uh, when you want to allow someone to uh, schedule an appointment with you? So it could be that these are kind of crazy times uh, and I'm not sure when I'm, when I'm going to be working, when I'm not going to be working. So I don't want anyone booking less than 48 hours in advance. Um, so you can set this, which basically says, nope, no more than two days in advance. You can't book me tomorrow. It has to be two days out. And then you can say, you know what, also, my calendar, I don't manage my calendar uh, very closely, uh, more than 14 days out. So you can say, here's the window. You can book any time between two days from now and 14 days out. It's really easy to adjust. You can just adjust the number of hours for um, the, uh, the lower threshold, for the upper threshold, it's in days. So again, just like what we were doing earlier, change it to whatever you want, click on save settings. Next thing, is you want to say, what days of the week am I working and what are the hours? And so you click on configure appointment slots. And this is here. So you're saying you're editing your availability for each day of the week. And the way this works is we've tried to configure this in the, the simplest way possible for inspectors. So when we were working with some of the beta testers, um, it occurred that really, with all the different options out there, most inspectors wouldn't do more than three inspections in a day. And so we kind of leveled on what's the simplest thing that we could offer. And then we came up with the idea of time slots. We just said, okay, typically an inspector says, hey, look, I like to work in the morning and then uh, have some time to write up that report. And then I may do a, another slot in the afternoon or some of the extremely busy guys will say, hey, look, I don't want any more than three slots in the day. I like travel time in between. Uh, and this gives me time to uh, work on the report before I go to the next one. So what you can do is you can just define each of these time slots. So maybe on a Sunday, I'll be, you know what? I don't mind working from 9 a.m. through to about 1 p.m. But that's it. 
I'm gonna have that four hour time slot. I'll do it. I'll do an inspection during that period. I'm not gonna do anything else. And you notice as I was clicking on these guys, it was giving me some feedback. So instantly I'm getting feedback whether that time slot doesn't make sense. If the start time is uh, after the end time, if it's outside of my uh, general working hours, it'll give me some immediate feedback. If I've made a mistake, it's really easy. If I don't wanna work a particular day, don't put a time slot in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say 9 a.m. Yep, I'll have that guy through to 1 p.m. Keep that. <clears throat> Monday, I only like to work in the mornings. Tuesday, let's say, Eight through 12 p.m. Oh, see, it's giving me some feedback already. End time cannot be before the start time. Switch that over. It's really easy to change these things. And then I'll say, you know what? I go with 1 p.m. to 3 on a Tuesday. Then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'll put some examples in there. You know what? Just for demonstra demonstration purposes, those are the only days I work. Maybe I'm a contractor. I've just started uh, out as a home inspector and I only, only want to work these days. These are the uh, time slots I can guarantee. Scroll to the bottom, save these settings, and then pretty much this is it. You're set up. You've enabled schedule now. You have now have a unique uh, scheduling URL, which I'll show you. You've defined the windows within when someone can book an appointment. So you said, hey, look, I want you to be able to book any time from 48 hours from now to two weeks. And then on top of that, you've said, here are the days of the week and the time slots that I'm available. You can customize these at any point. As soon as you save this, it reflects in real time. So then I can go back and say, I've got one last piece, which is I want to make sure that I've got my email notifications configured. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say, Click appointments, notification templates, this guy. And I'm going to go down to public appointments scheduled. And you can, you can change all of the templates. And you can change them depending on who the user is as well. And we're looking at potentially expanding this to, uh, we get lots and lots of requests for um, these to be via text message. So we're looking at providing confirmation messages by text, both to, right now we support text messages to the inspector, but we're also seeing that a lot of people would like for the real estate uh, professional and the, inspect and the uh, customer to also get text messages. So that's something we're definitely looking at. You can adjust the templates however you want. I'll save these guys. You're all set up. That's it, the configuration's there. So I'm gonna go back into company settings, public appointment settings, I can scroll down to the bottom and here's my link. So that if you have uh, websites um, hosted with us, then you can contact the web team, give them this link, they can do the rest. They can put a link on your page uh, that'll allow people to schedule with you from that point onwards. You can add this, uh, if you just wanna add the hyperlink, you could just add the content, it's everything within these quotes. You can add that to, um, you can hyperlink uh, part of your signature, say book now. Uh, you could add this to any of your email templates uh, to offer people to uh, book now. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to open a separate window so that we can go in as a buyer and we can see what this looks like. And this is the actual um, scheduler that I set up. So I'm gonna put it in incognito mode because I want to make sure that I'm not logged in. So I'm someone that's completely new to so these guys. And there you go. I've specifically put this in mobile view because this is how most people are going to be consuming it. If you're on a desktop, however, and scroll through here. And let me just put it in this window. Let me log out of here. I'll take you through it. And I'll take a walk through. So I'm in desktop view, tablet, mobile view. Works in all environments. It's got your logo here, rescales accordingly, um, just as you would with uh, 
your logo, you can just go into your profile section on the inspector dashboard, change your logo, second you save it, someone refreshes this page, it appears here. Uh, we're working on embedding options in about the next four to six weeks. You're going to be able to uh, customize the URL. So uh, and this will be a link, uh, this will be a logo for your um, brand and your company. You got to click on this, it'll take you back to your own website. So you'll be able to link out to this from your website, click on the logo and it'll take you straight back. So I'll just take you through what the process would look like for a buyer. So I'm going to go through here. As you can see, uh, I can't book anything uh, too far out. So I'll go, so you can see, if you look, it goes through to Wednesday the 6th. Got nothing because I didn't say that was available on Thursday or Friday. Um, I've also said that I can't go more than two weeks out. So there's nothing available. As I'm clicking on these options, it's giving me uh, different time slots that are available. These are based on what I've configured on the, uh, in my inspector dashboard. So I can go through here. It's really easy. Anything in blue is available. Anything in gray is unavailable. Uh, if this was a multi-inspector um, company, there would be an additional drop down here. By default, it would say um, no preference and it would give you calendar availability across the entire organization. You can select the individual inspectors uh, as well. And it would give you just a view into their calendars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, I want Tuesday the 5th at 8 a.m. I'm gonna click continue. Gives me a summary on the right-hand side of everything I've done. It's really easy to click edit and go back at any point and change anything. I'm going to punch in my property address. Let's choose a different one. So there we go. As I'm adding the address, we're looking this up. We're bouncing this off of uh, Google's address search. It's giving me one's uh, local options to me. You don't have to select uh, a, an address from here. Uh, we default to this uh, because it does a lot of the corrections and the normalization for you. But if it's a new development, you can still you can override this and put your own address in there. Populates all the information, uh, says whether the pro property is occupied. By default, it's set by that. But you can you can change that. If you want, you can add some additional details. So I can say when it was built, square footage. I'll say the utilities are on square footage. We are working in uh, on some updates in the next month or two where we're going to provide uh, you the, the ability to do um, add some pricing here. You can add uh, your services. The first iteration is going to give you the basic information. We know that the square footage often plays into pricing so that we're, we're working on that at the moment. Uh, I can add some additional information. Know what I do with that information other than not show up. Gives me a summary down the side. Again, really, really easy. Property details if I want it. Now at this point, we're making various um, confirmations to make sure that you're a real um, person. We want to make sure that this service isn't abused. Um, one of the concerns that came out of the beta test, um, anyone who was new to in implementing a scheduler on this site or anyone who'd done it previously just with a straightforward form, just to say, hey, look, contact me. They said they got a bunch of spam, they got a bunch of sales crap. Uh, if there's, the, the ways that we've addressed that is we've got capture in here, which is um, also monitoring to make sure that this is a real user. Then we're gonna ask them to sign in. They're gonna give you some basic information so that you can then uh, resume your normal process through the HomeWire dashboard. You've got all their basic information. So what I'm gonna do is, my information. When I hit continue, what it's going to do is it's going to bounce this against um, home gauge and it's going to say, does this person already have an account? If they don't have an account, it's going to ask me to create one. If I do, it's found that I have, it's going to say, yep, just sign in. And then this way we'll be able to associate if this is someone um, who's uh, purchased properties previously, or if this is a realtor, it's going to connect all their information already. So they're all, all their um, data is in one place. I'm going to sign in. I can put my agent information if I want. Again, we can find the agent um, just via their email address in here. That gives me a summary. I'll click on this. And that's it. If I want to book this now, it gives me a quick overview. 
if I want to edit anything, if I'm like, oh, you know what? I didn't mention something here. I can just quickly click on this, go SVO5, no property, click continue. I could jump to a particular section if I want. Everything looks good. Book appointment. I get a nice summary of this. It's very clear. Uh, we put this in place. Uh, we've got some field feedback from realtors uh, that often they prefer inspectors who have online scheduling capabilities and they may want to do a couple of, at once. They'll have a couple, couple of clients as they just want to leave the page up and quickly go through and do another one. Uh, we allow you to do up to three and then we'll block it on the same session. Uh, but that's a good feature for uh, realtors as well. So that's what it looks like from the uh, buyer or the realtor's perspective. Really, really easy, works on all devices. So the same screen, tablet, mobile, just books an appointment. I'll show you very quickly what this looks like from inspector, I'll log out, log back in. Appointments, hit my calendar, let's go to the fifth. There we go. <clears throat> this guy, oh, it was the fifth. Yeah, there we go, I knew it was the fifth. Uh, there we go, it's booked in. Just like any other request, I can jump in here. I could drag it around if I want. I could say, you know what? I'm not gonna be able to work that day. And it will send out all the notifications for me because the person's already signed in, giving us their information saying, hey, look, you sure you want to reschedule this? We'll send out all the notifications. If I have uh, integration with my Google Calendar, it's going to show up in my Google Calendar. Go in and I can make some edits. I can change the time if I want. I can add some additional information. I can look it up. And then I can associate this with, if you're doing any kind of pre-report preparation, you can do that. Uh, you can add any services at this point, bladder agreements. You can add any more information if you know what the rep is or you've got any uh, additional information. That maybe you've called them up to confirm some of the information you can go in here and then you can finalize it. And what we'll do is we'll give you some prompts as well to say, hey, look, typically um, you work within a certain set hours. This is outside of those hours. Are you, are you sure you want to complete, uh, continue with that? Yep, we do. And that's it. It'll send out all the uh, sample agreements and you can make sure that the agreements uh, are signed before the user is able to inspect, uh, able to view their report. And that's it. You've, we've gone through in uh, about 20 minutes, we've gone through the process of configuring schedule now really, really quick. You can see, you can see what the experience would be like for a user and we've booked an appointment. And what I'll do is uh, I get requests a lot for what does schedule now look like? I'd like to see, uh, experience it for myself. I'll post this link. Oh, let me sign out quickly. Supplier. I will post this link. This is for a test company that we have. Um, I'll open up some availability and you guys can go around and you can play around with it. You can see exactly what the uh, buyer would see. Uh, it'll create some sample appointments on my side, but it's not going to impact anything. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll give you a quick overview of what's coming next. This is the first iteration. Uh, and then I'll throw it out, I'll, I'll go through some Q and A. So for that. So what are the things that we're looking at? So advanced service configuration. So you, you'll notice that we didn't give the option to choose services. That is currently under construction. Anyone who uh, was in some of the beta tests may have seen some previews of that. Um, it's not in this initial version. I'd say we're about a month out from providing that. So you'll be able to select uh, the specific service, you'll be able to display what the price is, and that will follow them all the way through. Uh, we're looking at call center support. Um, we have, we're in discussions with a number of different call centers so that this could be uh, someone within a call center is using a version of this tool. They could see what your standard scripts are so they know exactly what you'd like um, them to be uh, talking the users through. I'd say that's coming a little bit later in the year. We wanted to get the features out for you guys first. Uh, and then we've got some multi-inspector features. Uh, through some of my discussions, uh, some of the things I heard is, we still want the admin to manage um, the schedules of multi-inspectors. They still want to be able to decide on which guy is going to be closest, I want to kind of manage uh, the route so it's most efficient. We're looking at some tools specifically for that as well, so we can line up the most efficient routes. 
Uh, in the first instance, it's probably going to be that we give administrators the ability to kind of jump in and see anyone's schedule, shuffle schedules around. Uh, and of course, after seeing this, after having a poke around with the tool yourself, um, provide us feedback, feedback at homegage.com, sign up for one of the beta programs, and you can help shape uh, what this is going to look like. So that covers everything I kind of want to walk through today. What I want to do now is I'd like to go through some questions. Right, so let's have a look. Uh, Dan Mansmith, uh, I'd like specific time slots, um, not a spread of time. So uh, we see that it's, uh, oh yeah, you'd like 8.30, 12, 4. Yep, that's definitely something we can look into. We, we settled on three um, initially, um, but we can expand that. We can make the granularity different. We went with the most straightforward uh, initially, and we want to see what the user feedback is. So that's that's a that's a good good item. Steve Baker has asked, um, I want pricing by zip code or county. When will this be an option? That's uh, that's one of the uh, reasons we held back on some of the services um, because it gets really complicated. Uh, I'd say the first thing that's going to come is pricing by service. So you'll be able to set what the service is and what the uh, price is. Then we're looking at some of these square foot pricing and uh, zip code pricing would come along with that. So I think it'd be great if uh, if Scott, we can, uh, sorry, Steve, we can work together on what that solution might look like because uh, that gets a lot more complicated. I see um, sometimes it's by square footage, but there's a rate for, uh, one of the options I've seen is there's a rate for Indiana and there's a rate for Illinois. Uh, and we might charge so much per square foot for Indiana, but it's a lot more for Illinois. Uh, so yeah, we, we need to work through that one. Uh, so Dan Mansmith, uh, my pricing is off uh, the sale price. Can this be a box that they could fill out? It's interesting you, um, you uh, put that in there. Uh, we are not only gonna fill that out, we are looking at if we can pull that information in directly from the MLS. So that as you're kind of punching in uh, the information, we get the last sale price, uh, the, the latest one. If that's correct, they can use that. If it's not correct, then they can, they can correct it. Uh, they can also, it'll also pre-populate some of the square footage, the number of rooms, save some of the typing as well. So that's definitely something that we're looking at. Uh, Aaron, so it's saying, uh, most of the things it lacks is any customization features, uh, selecting who will be at the inspection and being able to re remove. Uh, yeah, we specifically reduced uh, some of the customization. One of the key complaints from the, uh, the beta that we ran previously was that there were too many options available and there's too many steps. Um, that ultimately the scheduler as an extension of your website is a way of drawing leads into um, your company. So the first thing they're doing is they come to the website, you wanna entice them with all how great your inspections are, how thorough you are, how all, all the certifications you have. You're gonna give them some sample reports. Then you're gonna show them the, the scheduler. That is the last stage in kind of the purchase process. And so um, we did a lot of work to make that as short as possible. If there's some information that is critical that you'd like to include there, we can look at that, but we're always kind of balancing that between not putting too many steps in and discouraging someone from booking. So that's a good point. Um, then it's uh, Robin Schwartz. If our website was built by HomeGage and is currently hosted by HomeGage, uh, will this automatically be replaced by the existing version on your website? Uh, that is a two-sided question. Uh, it's very easy for it to be implemented. We're not automatically replacing it. Uh, we did get some requests from inspectors that, hey, look, I like my current request um, uh, appointment feature, and I don't want to go over to schedule now. So we're giving you the choice. Uh, so if you do want this, just go through the initial setup process, contact the web team, and they'll be able to implement this very easily. If you don't want it, and you want to stick with request appointment, that's fine, we're not forcing anyone to change. Uh, so Travis, we've got a question. Can you add a section for the listing agent? Also, how are you scheduling around mileage limits? Uh, so uh, the listing agent, uh, you've got the ability to put in uh, one of the agents. We can see if we are able to expand on that or put it in the general notes. That's why we added the general notes section. 
we, we should explore that a little bit further. Um, Travis, I'd like to follow up with you on the mileage limits to understand that a little bit better. So uh, what we'll do is we'll follow up you, with you uh, offline on that one. Uh, Stephen, could the system pull up county records based on the address? Yes, uh, we are currently using that. Um, if you show up for um, one of the sessions, it's later on this afternoon with Arpon. He'll be talking you through the new web writer. We're already using some information that we have available so that when you create a report, you punch in the address and we pull in all the information we uh, currently know about it. So last sale price, square footage, number of rooms, whether it has a pool, some things like that. We're looking at integrating some of that into the scheduler as well to save a lot of the uh, typing. And even if the, um, the buyer doesn't see that when they're entering it, we'd like to make it available for you guys so that when you ultimately turn this into a report, a lot of that homework's already been done for you. Uh, so we've got a question here from Assistant. Would choosing inspections needed from a list of services be included? Uh, yes. So that is, uh, that's coming in the, it's being built at the moment. Uh, that is coming in the next few weeks. So we, we thought this delivered the core value for uh, the scheduler. Uh, you might have seen on the inspector dashboard, so it's coming soon. I'll leave this guy, just sign in quickly. There are some sections already in here. There we go. Allow customers and agents to select, to select services when making appointments. Doesn't support it yet, but in the next uh, few weeks, we're gonna be building that feature out and you'll be able to turn it on. And all that mean is there'll be an additional step. So some people may decide that they don't want to do that, or maybe they'll decide that uh, their pricing is based on a combination of state and square footage and uh, price of the home, or they like to have a conversation with someone, so they don't wanna do that. But if you do, there'll be a toggle, you can turn it on. Any of the um, services that you configured will be uh, displayed there. Uh, let's have a look. Ralph has said, will it work when prices are calculated using both age and size of the home? Uh, this is one of the reasons we have this toggle here. We have found this is the most complicated part of scheduling. That, um, there's so many different variations on how inspectors like to price. Um, that it can be difficult to list a service with an accurate price next to it. So we're gonna cover as many cases as we can while still making it manageable for the user. Uh, I'd say for that particular instance, it may be worth keeping this uh, unchecked for the time being and following up with a call. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll work out if, the, if that's something that we could support. Okay, Randy, thanks, I appreciate the feedback. Uh, so anonymous attendee, how do I attach the agreement to HomeGage? Is there a certain format that I'm supposed to be using? Uh, what I'll suggest is we'll pass this along to support. That doesn't seem directly related to the scheduling session. So we'll make sure that we, uh, we get some follow up on that one. Um, the appointment request. Uh, services are searchable. How do we limit their choices? Uh, what we can do is uh, we can do a follow up session. What I'm going to do is once services are available, once we've got a preview, then I'd love to have another focus group just like this, but a little bit more interactive, we'll, we'll let you speak. Uh, and then we'll run through and then we'll actually show you what services would look like. We'll show you how to configure it and we'll get some real time feedback on that one. Uh, will uh, John Buckley, uh, will the scheduler be able to break down pricing by number of rooms? Again, that's, a, that's another variation of what we, uh, we've seen before. Pricing is complicated. Uh, initially, it's going to be you're going to set standard prices for um, uh, the particular services. What I typically see is people say, hey, square footage from X to Y is this. Uh, Z through 1,000 is this price. So we're, we'll, we'll handle that, I think, in a separate session. Uh, does the system reverse communicate with Google Calendar in conjunction with my abil uh, ability to not be related to home inspections, i.e. Family, family calendar conflicts. Yes, so it does look if you, if you have Google Calendar, so let me recap that question. I didn't do a good job of uh, uh, recapping that. So Matt was asking, 
does this synchronize with Google Calendar? So if I've got a family birthday and I've said that I've got a time slot that overlaps with that family birthday, are you gonna let someone uh, book an appointment? So the short answer is yes. If you've got Google Calendar in integration, what we do is we look at all the time slots available and then we look at what is already booked in. So if there's anything overlapping with one of those time slots, we'll remove the time slot availability. So if you've got a, a birthday booked in on the calendar and it's synchronized with um, schedule now, then we will we'll remove that automatically for you. Uh, Scott says, will the request appointment interface be updated to look like this uh, without the time slot component? Short answer, yes. Uh, that is uh, the uh, focus for the team right now. Get schedule now out for um, single inspectors and uh, provide some of the basic multi-inspector features. The very next thing that we're working on is adding the service selection screen. Then straight after that, we are looking at revamping the request appointment. Uh, what we're considering right now, it would follow a very, very similar flow to this. It's just that the buyer would provide a couple of different options. And I would love to have a focus group to walk you through um, the designs and make sure that the workflow uh, makes sense for everyone before we start on that. And then one more before we wrap up. So uh, Dan Mansmith, I currently use ISN. I want to dump them. Uh, so when pricing is available, uh, Okay, so it's uh, Dan saying uh, currently uses ISN and hit. really it's about when pricing is available. So I'd say uh, services, you'll be able to set prices with that and will automatically calculate prices based on the services. Depending on how complicated your pricing is, it will be supported, I expect in about four to six weeks when we'll have that feature out. Look out for future um, product updates and we'll, we'll keep you posted on that one. Um, in terms of if you have some really complicated pricing, uh, we should discuss that. So what I'll say, what I can promise is we are actively working on implementing services that will have pricing available. You will be seeing that, I'd say, uh, very, very soon, next uh, six weeks, two months. Uh, if you have complicated pricing, what we'll do is we'll have some focus groups and we'll have some discussions about what we can do. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think that's all the questions covered. Uh, I really appreciate your time today. Um, just quickly recap. If you want to find any of these instructions, go to support, HomeGage Support Center, search for configure schedule now. Those are the instructions I just walked through. You can use the scheduler as of today. And we'll be communicating this on social media. We'll be sending out emails. It's available to everyone. If you have a website hosted with us, you can contact the web team. They're extremely busy right now because there's a lot of people um, at home revamping their websites. But uh, set this up, send them the link, and they'll be able to schedule you in to get that updated. If you have a website hosted by um, anyone else or uh, you're doing it yourself, should be pretty straightforward, it's just a hyperlink. Uh, one thing that we do point out is it's a separate link. We're not embedding things in iframes. Uh, you're gonna see that more and more across the web. Iframes are slowly being deprecated across the web. So we're gonna be moving away from that as much as possible. Um, that's why we're looking at some of the customization, some of the ability to link back to your website. So if you're hosted with us, got one of our awesome sites, um, contact the web team. If you'd like to consider hosting with us, there are some awesome examples of our websites. Uh, if you just go to homegage.com, inspect our website, sample websites, you can look through, there's a really great uh, sample here. It's not just about putting the website together, they do SEO uh, and they, they help you with uh, some of your Google listings as well. Great, well, uh, thanks for your time, everyone. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be following up with uh, some of those uh, focus groups soon.